Some great discoveries need to be rediscovered. In this way we could understand how far-reaching their consequences are indeed. Only then could we grasp the beauty of truth and the power of creativity that unveiled it. This is certainly the case with the astonishing Varna culture unearthed in 1972. One could hardly believe that its legacy of cold artifacts had fallen in oblivion for almost 6,500 years. But for all that, it had a huge impact on the intellectual evolution of mankind. The contributions of Varna culture range from the oldest gold treasure in the world to the conceptual synthesis of two types of creativity, emerging science and art. They are welded in a system of rising knowledge which gave birth to the first European civilization and to a trend that can be regarded as the world's enlightenment one. The people involved in it were of truly gigantic capacities as far as their insight and creativity were concerned. Were they disciples of Prometheus, as the legend goes, of humans being taught by the noble Titan? His punishment by jealous gods went hand in hand with the Pandora project and the Great Flood. Mythological codes have thus encrypted a message of crucial discontinuity. The life of a civilization is a wave-like process, upheavals and advancement, are followed by setbacks or even catastrophes. A metaphor to the effect that angry gods have spread disasters conveys the meaning of a dramatic change putting an end to a great culture. Was it the doom of the mysterious civilization which used to flourish along the Black Sea west coast? in the 5th millennium BC. The finds of Varna Necropolis opened up new horizons for us to pursue in retrospect. They were recognized by leading archaeologists as a real breakthrough. Sir Colin Renfrew referred to them as a momentous discovery as important in its way as the discovery by Heinrich Schliemann a hundred years ago, of the great treasure of ancient Troy. In Japan, the 10th anniversary of the excavations attracted a lot of publicity. According to a memorable message by Prince Mikasa, this copper culture of Varna, popularly known for its magnificent gold artifacts, not only predated the great ancient civilizations of Shumer, Mesopotamia and of Egypt, but also showed evidence of the existence of a ruling class distinguished by special wealth and authority, advanced copper weapons and metal artifacts and implements. Social, economic and technological data thus confirmed the discovery of a new civilization making Varna the oldest civilization known to man. Perhaps even more significantly, it unlike any other of the civilizations of the ancient continent, was shown to have clear and direct links with a preceding indigenous Neolithic culture. In his article, Ancient Bulgaria's Golden Treasures, the celebrated British archaeologist Sir Colin Renfrew has written, the world's oldest treasure of gold, unearthed as recently as 1972, was not discovered in Shumer or Egypt. 
homes of the earliest known civilizations, the obvious places to expect such a momentous discovery. Nor did it come from pre-Columbian America famous for the rich gold finds in Peru and Colombia. It was uncovered, much to everyone's astonishment, in northeastern Bulgaria near the attractive modern city of Varna, and it may well be more than 6,000 years old. The discovery of this oldest gold hoard seemed to confirm my own theory that prehistoric Bulgarians have invented metallurgy independent of earlier metal workers of the Near East. It also suggested that Bulgarians of 4000 BC had passed their gold working skills to the superb goldsmiths of the Thracians, inhabitants of Bulgaria in the first millennium BC. The find was as important in its way as the discovery by Heinrich Schliemann a hundred years ago of the great treasure of ancient Troy, for while the golden discoveries at Varna are not so elaborate as those at Troy, they are at least 1,500 years older and can surely be dated before 3,500 BC. Calibrated radiocarbon dating may well place them between 4,600 and 4,200 BC. By the middle of the fifth millennium before Christ, the intellectual evolution of mankind had reached remarkably high levels on the Balkan Peninsula. Creative thinking and technological skills had been welded together in the genesis of a mysterious civilization. It came into being along the Black Sea coast in northeastern Bulgaria. The legacy of this unique culture includes the world's oldest gold treasure as well as the oldest patterns of sacred knowledge. A recent study published in Antiquity 81 in 2007 reveals new perspectives on the Varna Cemetery, AMS dates and social implications. The research team of this new project has begun the precision radiocarbon dating of the super important Copper Age Cemetery at Varna. These first dates show the cemetery in use from 4560 to 4450 before Christ, with the possibility that richer burials are earlier. It appears that a cognitive revolution had taken place along the northwestern Black Sea coast by the middle of 5th millennium BC. Making a huge leap forward, knowledge started evolving in a proto-science, ahead of its time indeed, but with a huge potential for innovations. Hence the accent of our research is laid on the potential capacities of prehistoric intelligence. Human reason could bridge cultures and continents, paving the way for amazing future achievements. The far-reaching impact of sacred knowledge could be traced to some of the greatest projects in the past, like the Great Pyramid, for example. It was built 20 centuries after the Varna culture. Stonehenge too was erected almost 2,000 years after the world's oldest gold treasure had been buried in the necropolis by the Black Sea. Paradoxically, the huge monuments in Egypt and on the British Isles have something in common with the tiny gold artifacts from Aurolithic Varna. There is a certain correlation between them in terms of angles and proportions. Is it a matter of sacred geometry or of pragmatic design? The kinship between them goes beyond mere analogies and into the scope of what we call archaeometronics, precision measuring of artifacts within the framework of some systemic criteria. They reveal mathematical hunches and visual heuristics which belong to the inherent intelligence of prehistoric people. That was the reason why angles and proportions were so significant to them. Presently they could help us revive lost knowledge about the first steps of scientific reason. It took precision measuring to build temples, steer sea vessels and lead people to their survival. It was important not only to gaze at the stars above, but to carefully observe them for the purposes of navigation, astronomy, or the timing of agricultural activities. 
The incredible precision of prehistoric people encourages us to believe that they could have been equally precise in matters of measurement. Archaeometronics, therefore, seems a plausible approach to the reconstruction of their productive thinking. The related archaeologics of creativity could incorporate the results of precise measuring and the mathematical hunches that come hand in hand with it. Anyway, it would not be fair to underestimate the intelligence of Copper Age thinkers only because their technologies were primitive. It is only natural to conclude that Varna culture should not be viewed just as a regional phenomenon. We believe it to be the first European civilization. Its legacy includes astonishing gold artifacts, over 3,100 tokens. The right angle is of particular prominence in the bull-shaped figurines. It appears that the bull had been a sacred animal for the Varna civilization too. So were the Apis bulls in the civilization of ancient Egypt two millennia later. This is probably the best place to grab the bull by the horns. In contrast to the images and figurines of Apis, the Varna bulls bear markings which denote angular and numerical ratios. Numbers are represented by multiple dots, ornamental convex forms along the contour of the objects. Here is a pattern of clayware representing the famous dynamic circle. A few millennia later, in the Vedic mathematics, this pattern was used in the proof of a theorem, which is nowadays associated with the name of Pythagoras. Needless to say, these Vedic proofs have been arrived at quite earlier than the time of Pythagoras. And as for the Varna heuristic design, it is 2,000 years before the Vedic period. There is yet another, even more striking point about the cultural bridges of mutual influence in times that we call prehistory. The material evidence of far-reaching influence is again clayware, especially corded ware, typical of the Varna civilization from the fifth millennium BC. Amazing parallels exist between this type of pottery and the celebrated Jomon pottery in Japan from the same period and even earlier. The word Jomon implies corded ware, more precisely decorated by means of cords, thin ropes or strings made of twisted threads. These similarities are all the more astonishing because of the fact that Varna is at the Black Sea coast some 8,000 kilometers away from the Pacific coasts of Japan. Is it at all possible that such enormous distances could have been covered by prehistoric men? Or is it that human creativity has been able to develop nearly identical patterns at the same time at so remote places? What type of cultural relationships could have existed by that time across the Eurasian space? along the axis of influence that 4,000 years later would be referred to as the Hyperborean Diagonal. In the shape of the two gold bulls, or the design of the gold-plated pottery bowl, one could grasp a divine proportion, the Fibonacci sequence which goes with a golden ratio is represented by means of dots on the surface of the two gold bulls or by cords corresponding to the lines on the surface of the bow, which is convex. This makes it possible to use them as gold standards for the purpose of measurement, for example, in calibrating navigation equipment or in azimuth plotting. These first standards are remarkably small in size Nevertheless, they are amazingly informative, implementing the conceptual synthesis 
of proto-science and art. The term proto here signifies very remote past, not by any means showing neglect or lack of esteem for primeval creativity. On the contrary, the finds from Varna seem to belong to a highly developed race of humans, whom we cannot even think of calling primitive. If it had not been for the miniature dimensions of their instruments, we might consider these people to be the legendary race of the Titans. According to myths, Prometheus of the Titans was the first to have given essential knowledge to the following generations of humans. Maybe we should take mythology more seriously. Were the Titans indeed the most advanced Copper Age people? capable of teaching others? Was their golden civilization terminated by a catastrophe, a memory of which persisted in myths as the synonym of a worldwide tragedy? Has their sacred knowledge given birth to the first European enlightenment? Are its incredible gold standards and proportions, in fact the lessons of a noble mind, truly gigantic in terms of intelligence, not of body size. Outlining the characteristic features of a genuine civilization, we take into account a number of criteria, the quantity of metals and the exceptionally high quality of artifacts, the evidence of social hierarchy, the relation. Now we're going to draw the attention to yet another very important criterion, the existence of a system of knowledge which could have given rise to applied proto-science. The Varna civilization meets the latter requirement, while no other culture before it satisfies this criterion. Of course, there were some other cultural centers of the same age, which also had impressive contributions as regards pieces of art. But from the angle of scientific contents of artifacts, Varna was unique in the whole Enolithic world. Maybe it is high time we got rid of condescending attitudes in regard to the thinking capacities of Stone Age men. Some 300 generations ago, they managed to survive in harsher conditions with very limited resources. But there was the self-reproductive resource of knowledge available to them even at that time. And the power of intuition was there for them too. Prehistoric people made proper use of both cope with the difficulties of a rogue world and a relatively primitive society. They deserve respect for their struggle and appreciation of their intelligence. The Aurolithic Varna civilization has implemented its mathematical hunches and discoveries in gold standards. These masterpieces of art and craftsmanship can pass for jewelry. In fact, until recently, they were believed to be simply pieces of jewelry. But besides their aesthetic qualities, they have scientific and practical value that enable people in the Enolithic to measure angles and determine positions. The Varna civilization has made the first compasses and protractors, geometrical tools and navigation devices. Last but not least, there is evidence in its legacy of the golden ratio number and the related sequence of numbers rediscovered in the Middle Ages by Fibonacci and named today after his name. The material embodiments of this divine proportion are gold standards of various forms. They are truly amazing, 
all the more exquisite because of the golden ratio encoded in them. Twenty centuries later, the golden ratio code dominated artistic and architectural achievements in ancient Egypt. But the earliest encounter with the golden ratio and the Fibonacci sequence happened in our lithic Varna 6,500 years ago. Here is a challenge to old paradigms about the evolution of human reason. Intelligence is the decisive argument for us to judge whether a Copper Age culture had the potential of becoming a genuine civilization. Varna culture did evolve into the first civilization of its time. We choose to call it the Aurolithic civilization. Aur coming from rays of light but also gold, while lithic is generally associated with stones. At first glance, it might seem more appropriate in keeping with the tradition to use two Greek words to form the name of this age and the related culture. The result obtained would be chrysolithic, which, however, creates an ambiguity in the context of Stone Age cultures. To speak of a chrysolithic one would imply the semi-precious stone of greenish color, the mineral by the name of chrysolith. While we intend to lay the accent on the gold and stone masterpieces, revealing the conceptual synthesis of primeval science and art. Within the framework of Copper Age cultures, there was one unique gold and stone civilization, the Aurolithic civilization, born on the Balkan Peninsula, the first capital of which used to be Varna. Thus, we have a twofold message for the Varna legacy. On the one hand, the oldest gold pieces of art on earth, and on the other hand, the first steps of systematic knowledge shedding light on the genesis of science and technology. In the twilight zone of prehistoric times, there could be no panoramic view of this Stone Age enlightenment. Was it the dawn of Civilization I, or was it the magnificent sunset of a preceding superculture? Now the resurrection of the Aurolithic civilization occurs after 6,500 years spent in oblivion. We hope that its lost knowledge could be reinvented with the help of its proper gold standards and proportions. Varna may turn out to be the cradle of civilized Europe, home to a genuine prehistoric renaissance. We're going to lay stress on the cognitive functions and the potential implementations of artifacts. To us, they are by far more than pieces of art. We're tempted to view them from the angle of what we call a conceptual synthesis of science and art. We shall try to unveil the synergy of proportions, the combined power of groups of objects which opens up new prospects for the revival of hidden knowledge. Lost knowledge revival takes place with the help of the gold standards and proportions implemented in the gold artifacts of prehistoric Varna. The measuring functions of some artifacts reveal the primeval elegance of newborn science and art. Reinventing these functions, we could grasp how beauty and truth have been synthesized in the genesis of sacred knowledge. Our research is focused precisely on these links. They reveal the evolution of intelligence, hence we are trying to view Varna culture from the angle of future developments. This is a kind of future in the past relating to the archaeologics of thinking and creativity. It bridges Neolithic times and the epoch of antiquity, promoting geometry and astronomy as the beginning of applied science. The finds from Varna are not merely pieces of art, they are also handmade models of concepts and proportions. There is a system of knowledge encoded in the shape of artifacts and their potential functions. Due to it, prehistoric men achieved incredible social steering. Rule and power depended to an 
ever-increasing extent on knowledge. In order to perform these functions, competence was required. Authority was based on know-how. For instance, in navigation, global positioning, arable land measuring, martial strategy and tactics. The accumulation of knowledge went hand in hand with the emergence of intelligentsia in its capacity as the subject of new cognitive functions. Ruslan Kostov, president of the Bulgarian Mineralogical Society and his team have drawn our attention to the correlation between carnelian and gold beads as far as weight is concerned. Hundreds of them have been studied by these authors who arrive at the conclusion that a marked propensity for miniaturization is characteristic of Varna culture in general. For example, on the above picture is a barrel-shaped chalcedony carnelian bead with a gold microcylinder in the drilled hole. The dimensions are approximately 2 by 2 millimeters and the thickness is 0.2 millimeter. Lost knowledge revival starts with the very structure of artifacts and goes on by discovering their potential functions. Some of these objects turn out to be gold standards and tools, although they look like decorations. It might not be an exaggeration to consider them as measuring instruments in use by the oldest science. Whether by intuition or on purpose, some of these modular tools were meant to fit together. Combining them highlights the synergy of proportions, which is otherwise hard to grasp. These artifacts are handmade memories of the efforts which human thinking the more important and remarkable the truth. However, if beauty should stand up in defense of truth, their joint force can no longer be neglected. The Aurolithic civilization from the 5th millennium before Christ is obviously the first to have discovered the golden ratio. This principle rules in matters of beauty and truth. Hence, art and science have been synthesized in the structure of gold standards from the Varna necropolis. Their authors remain dedicated to harmony while seeking for what we now call mathematical concepts and principles. Is it at all possible to resurrect a lost culture on the basis of finds and interpretations? We doubt it, but for all that, it seems worthwhile to reinvent lost standards for harmony. Then comes the subtle feeling of elegant truth. Hunches turn into insight and the spirit of a great civilization lives again. Thank you.